Hi everyone and welcome to a very exciting episode of the Mycelium Digest. We have our panelists, our expert panelists, Donovan, Corey, and of course myself. And today we are bringing to you the exciting topic of microdosing. So we have a lot to cover. We're going to do our best to cover um, a lot in this session. Um, just know that if questions come up for you at any point in time, you can always reach out to me. And we will probably have another session, um, probably a live session next month so that our members can get on and interact with us and, and ask us some questions. Um, so this microdosing thing, you know, I was thinking about it. The three of us, we kind of all started microdosing at the same time. It was about two and a half years ago. And it was, it was, I think, December or January, right before the pandemic hit. And we had listened to the book, How to Change Your Mind, and decided that we were going to start microdosing. It was like the, the mushrooms were like, oh, the, pandem the pandemic's coming. You guys are going to need this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, two and a half years later, here we are. Um, and... We have a lot of good information to bring you, including our own personal experiences and testimonies, which are really powerful. So, um, yeah. So, so I think I'll, I'll kind of start by discussing something that in almost all of the discussions I've had with um, hundreds of people over the last two and a half years that are sometimes hesitant, they don't know a lot about psilocybin, and they've been reading articles, seeing you know, Time Magazine on, on the newsstand at the grocery store, and it's about all this exploding psychedelic information. And I, I kind of say, well, a great starting point is let's go to some of the science to show you mm. why, and I'm the science geek, so here I am again, but um, to show you why it's worth giving a try. It's worth thinking about. Mm. And there's the, the great study that's been going on for over 20 years now, the Center of Psychedelics and Consciousness Research at John Hopkins. And this actually happened a couple months before we started trying to microdose. I saw a, a TED Talk with Roland Griffin, uh, Griffith, who's the director of the, the center director for John Hopkins. And he, was, he put up this image of an EEG that showed your neurology and as they're having one of their patients in the clinical study do a microdose test. So he describes it in this TED talk that they had a patient sit on a couch, they put a remote control in his right hand, he was watching a tiny TV with a country western movie and very simply they put an EEG on him and monitored his brain activity. Okay, they brought him back the next day and they put him in the exact same chair, exact same remote control, exact same country western movie. And they gave him a microdose of 0.015 grams of psilocybin. And they monitored his brain activity. And the image, which Aaron will probably pull up so you can yeah. see a better picture of it. But I got it. <laughs> he just wants to show his picture. <laughs> I have shown this to hundreds of people yeah. in the last two and a half years because it's a great starting point to illustrate mm -hmm. On the one side, where there's only about 300 neurological scaffolds of brain activity firing signals back and forth around your cranium, is the patient with no psilocybin. So that's just you sitting on the couch watching TV. The next day, the same guy comes in and, and he's got a tiny microdose of psilocybin and he has over 3,000 neurological pathways that are active in his brain doing nothing more than sitting watching a television program with a remote control in his right hand. Mm -hmm. And John, uh, the Roland Griffith, as he talked about this in this TED Talk, just caught my attention like, holy cow, man, like that's a lightning storm. That's like a Christmas tree at Mardi Gras. <laughs> like I want my brain activity to yes. look like that as I age. Definitely. Um, and, and so I have used this image and I have it on my phone, I have it on my computer, <laughs> I have it on everywhere. Because this image is a great starting point to start to think about what's possible. What can this medicine actually mean for me? And so kind of fast forwarding two and a half years later, um, we'll obviously share a little bit of our stories about our experience microdosing. But I think this is a good scientific 
foundation to have the conversation of, you know, don't be afraid of this. Mm -hmm. We could talk about that. Um, Why is it important? Maybe I give this a try. There's not many other medicines on the planet that can create this mm. in your in your your neurology. And so that's my yeah. two cents for now. I'll, I'll chime in here in a second. <laughs> All right. Um, well, would you like to share maybe some personal stories about how microdosing has helped you in the last two and a half years? Yeah. So I would definitely say that when we first came across the concept, um, you know, I had tried psilocybin, of course, but it was always way more than a microdose um, and never even thought about just taking a tiny piece of a mushroom and eating it. I, I was like, wow, I've got some mushrooms. Let's, let's just eat a little bit. Okay, let's try it. And I work in a pretty stressful corporate setting. Um, sometimes compassion gets pushed aside for progress and, and driving business. And um, one of the things that I think really stands out and oftentimes it's most noticeable by the people you live with, your partners, your family, your friends. But I kind of found myself over the course of the first couple of months being way more compassionate, way more connected to kind of slowing myself down. Mm-hmm. And then the other really cool thing that's happened is I've a firestorm lit around my creativity again. Yeah. Um, I've fall, fallen back in love with doing art and taking the time to like draw and paint and do things that had kind of been locked in the vault for decades for me. (laughs) And so those are two really big things. You know, we talk a lot about how psilocybin can help folks that need assistance with PTSD or anxiety or stress or all the things that are out there in our society. And that's true. It's a huge tool for all these avenues. It's also an amazing tool for people that might not have all those things going on, but are just in a healthy space and they can tap and unlock these doors and windows in your, in your consciousness and in your imagination, your creativity. I feel like I'm a little bit more heartfelt and I'm still working on that. But, uh, (laughs) you know, those are some of the things that I would say. Yeah. It's helped me a ton. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that, you know, we've been married for almost 14 years and. Um, you know, we've had some few, you know, a few rough years um, in, in the last five years or so. And we did the counseling thing and, you know, we've been actively trying to work at our marriage. And since we both started microdosing, um, it really has helped us even to just have those really deep conversations, um, even if they're not fun conversations. Um, it's just really allowed for us to connect on a deeper level. Um, the mushrooms literally tear away the layers, you know, the, the, the layers that the ego has built up as, as our, you know, defense mechanisms and our, our protection. Um, so yeah, just a lot of really beautiful, um, ego disillusion, ego disillusion, yeah, main gifts to to the species of home day. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that is, is really lovely what you, what you talked about. And I remember when I first spoke to you guys about this, um, as I was about to start my own journey in microdosing was the importance of intentionality. Yes. Even though it's, even though you're just microdosing and it's something that is sub to non-perceptual as you go about your day, the importance of intentionality, you know, of, of, of thinking about things that are important to you in that moment or kind of being in that present moment and staying in that present moment. And, and where it helped with me with that is that it kept me in that present moment. And, and Corey, you spoke about compassion and, and those types of things, which is, which is so, so true and so powerful. And it leaves you a little bit more vulnerable, but yeah. you find the power in that vulnerability, yeah. you know, and you're able to pass that on to someone else. You know, and I found myself dealing with my own students, college students, oftentimes saying, it's okay. You can exit the system. You don't have to participate, you know, and, and, and going through it. And I asked you guys a ton of questions. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. how often should I take it? Methods of intake. Um, do I need to have a meditative practice as well as doing this? Should I be in some kind of good physical condition? Um, you know, these kinds of things. And I think these yeah. are questions that we, we should, we should, and answers we should talk about today. But yeah. for me, the reason why I asked some of those questions is because I participated in some of the nootropics that were oh. already mm-hmm. out there. Um mm-hmm. Uh, Pro vigil, you know, I, you know, I, I went for a, uh, you know, routine physical, you know, I was exhausted. I was a single parent with three boys and they all played hockey in different age groups and weekends were spent shuttling kids all over the place with hockey gear, which is just awful. Um, (laughs) And so I was just like a, not even a glorified pack mule, like the poorest (laughs) pack mule ever. Um, Because, you know, a five-year-old can't carry 40 pounds of hockey gear. But they have to, they <laughs> you have can to skate wear. with it, but you can't carry it. <laughs> so, so, yeah, and, and, and the, my doctor said, man, you look road hard and put up wet. And I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, are you sleeping? I'm like, I, I don't have time. You know, just And so he yeah. so prescribed um, modafinil. I think its mm. consumer name is ProVigil. Okay. And yeah, man, awesome, uh, you know, but the come down was for me, and I know this is an anecdotal experience, was really rough. Yes. You know, it was like bedtime when that thing wore off, you know, but while it was working, it was great. And the microdosing thing for me, uh, it, it really helped me in, 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 in a number of ways. One of it was I started really thinking about personal sovereignty as a human being. And how can I become a sovereign individual in a world that is currently suffering from this mass formation psychosis, where we are constantly bombarded with uh, everything from uh, the latest vaccine, the latest disease coming down the pipeline, uh, you know, all these things. And, And it just made me realize that I don't I don't have to participate. You know, I can, I can, I can think for myself. I can be comfortable for what who I am. I can become sovereign. I don't have to buy my beef from the grocery store. I can buy it from the local farmer who's who is grass grass fed and grass finished. I can I can be a sovereign individual. And I think medicine such as this is the is the antidote to our current state of this mass formation psychosis that we currently are experiencing in our society. And microdosing is a great step into it um, to where you, you feel you feel safe, you feel self-aware, you feel that you are able to gain some of these human skills that are that are quickly being eroded away in the sense of, of, of self-awareness creativity, vulnerability, authenticity, um, intention. Each other. Yeah. Yeah. It can, human connection, real yeah. authentic human connection. And, and it's a great first, first step. And it's, it's completely safe. I feel, yeah. and you know, some of the other questions I asked, I asked you guys was, okay. Uh, frequency. Can you guys talk on frequency? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the neat thing is, too, since we had these conversations two and a half years ago, there's been a ton of like new information, new science. People are microdosing all over the world. So um, some of the basic things I remember you coming to us would like first off is don't be afraid. Right. The, the whole point of a microdose is a background amount in your blood system, in your bloodstream that is not perceptionable, not something that you're not going to be able to to do your normal day, go about your work, go about your life, take care of your kids, you know, be you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the microdose level that's been set in most of the clinical studies, I referenced John Hopkins, but I could also talk about the study at Yale, the study at Stanford, the study at New York University, and dozens and dozens and dozens of other ones is between 0.015 grams. 0.15. 0.15 micrograms. Yeah. So 0.15 grams is 0.15 micrograms. So um, it's a tiny amount. You consume it. You can do it in all kinds of different ways. You can, 
you know, I just, with my bulletproof coffee in the yep. morning, I just rip off a little piece of mushroom and eat it. And just like a pill, I'll chew it up and swallow it. Um, you can put it in tea. Mm-hmm. You can put it on a spoon of honey and eat it that way. Mm-hmm. You can put it in a salad. You'd never even taste it. Doesn't matter how you get it in. Yep. And it doesn't really matter what time of day you choose to do that. I like to do mine in the morning. You like to do it in the morning? When I start my day, I like my brain <laughs> to look like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, off I go, you know? And the point is, um, <laughs> if you take the right amount, you shouldn't feel it. And if you ever do have a sensation that's a little bit, oh, I kind of feel it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's, <laughs> a, it's okay to giggle. Yeah. Um, but also, <laughs> just breathe, relax. You're not going to freak out. You're not going to go on some massive voyage. Um, it, it's very, very quick to usually pass that you may have eaten a little bit too big of a piece. And as you get comfortable with it, um, I've had lots of people that I know that have started microdosing that they started out with just a tiny little piece that probably wasn't even the microdose amount, 0.15 grams. Maybe it was a half or a third of that. And I've um, I've said to lots of those folks, how is it going? Great, okay, you don't feel it, no. Well then move it up a little bit, double it. Mm -hmm. And they have, and no problem. Um, it's just like when you drink coffee or use, you know, some, some other substance, your body starts to get accustomed to it. So the yeah. protocols are yeah. pretty interesting. I'll let Aaron maybe shed some light on those. Yeah. So there's a few protocols out there. Um, and the purpose of this is really just to educate everyone here about what's going on in the, the world of psilocybin. Um, uh, there is a protocol by Paul Stamets, who is the the mushroom guy. Um, if and you can look it up too, it's called the Paul Stamets Stack, and it's stacking psilocybin, lion's mane, and niacin, which is a B vitamin. And the and he did he did a study some some mice studies with that, and it's it's proven to be a synergistic effect. So as if psilocybin alone isn't already, you know, doing the 3000 pathways, um, add some lion's mane to it and some niacin and it really has a synergistic effect. So I would encourage you to uh, look that up. You can just Google search Paul Stamets stack. Yep. Um, And his protocol is five days on, two or three days off. Um, the, there's another protocol, the Fatimin protocol, which is one day on, two days off. One day from, on. Yeah. And that's, is that from Paul Fatiman? I, I don't believe? know what his first name is, but fat, yeah. the Fatiman protocol. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And you can actually email him and talk to him. He, he makes himself available for that. So, um, you know, we personally don't stick to any particular schedule. Um, I microdose probably three or four days a week. Yeah, and I'm not very good with routines, so sometimes I microdose <laughs> for 10 days in a row and then I won't do it for a week. Some days I do it every other day. Um, you can do it twice a day. You can do it in the morning. You can do it in the afternoon. Yeah, and, and the neat thing is, and that's the point I think that's important to stress, is if you're taking the microdose level, don't be afraid. Um, that's usually the, the hurdle that keeps our species from doing anything is fear. Yeah. And it's quite honestly, it's, it's a disease onto itself. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid. Um, you know, I, I said, I'm not good at routine. So I've done it every other day for months at a time. And then I've done it, not done it at all for a month. And then I'll do it for a couple of days in a row. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. But there is a little bit of thought in the two days on, one day yeah. off, or the five days, two or mm-hmm. three days off, and that you get the psilocybin in the background, lighten up the neurology, kind of having some of the feelings of compassion, artistic creativity, whatever it's going to bring to you. And then to have it not have mm. it in your bloodstream for two or three days mm. allows your body to kind of come back to homeostasis, to come back yeah. to its normal state. Even though it's a tiny bit in there, it's doing a lot of magic, as that image showed. So coming back to your baseline for a few days 
gives you a chance to kind of be reflective, to integrate some mm -hmm. of the things that maybe um, you thought of, you experienced, you felt. Maybe your, your wife told you, hey, I noticed you're really happy, um, <laughs> which I've heard from her in the middle of my microdosing. And so I think that's important and it makes sense to follow one of these protocols. I'm just not very good at them. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of a cowboy. Yeah, and they're out there for a reason, <laughs> you know, to um, maximize uh, the, the, your, your medicine basically without building up a tolerance to it. Yep. Um, and what I find personally, you know, if, if I'm struggling a little bit, you know, I'll microdose every day just for that extra support and, and reflection of, you know, anything else that maybe I need to be aware of. Um, but what I find is the days that I don't microdose, especially if my microdose was a little bit bigger the day before, is I just have this out, this burst of creativity when I'm doing my stream of con consciousness journaling in the morning I keep an extra journal next to that because once you get all the mind dump out you know your true authentic self can come out and that's when the creativity really comes out so I guess the point of this is that you will find your rhythm with microdosing. Just well do it. Don't be afraid of it. Well Just said. do it. And, and Donovan, you asked kind of when we started, like, what should I do? Should I read? Should I go to the park? Should I meditate every day? Should I do yoga? And the answer is yes, 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 yes. Um, but Setting the intention. Setting intention is important. I like to talk about, and I told you, Erin does this stream of consciousness journaling in the morning which she's way more disciplined than I am. So um, I watch and have seen all the benefits of it. But taking some time to set intention, to spend 10 minutes in the morning and, and do a quick meditation. Maybe you go for a walk with your dog. That's a form of walking meditation. Mm -hmm. Go sit in the park and watch people, you know, just calm yourself for a little while. Aaron's journaling process, I know, has been really powerful for her. And I think when you started, Donovan, didn't you go to the park and journal and read books? And I, I did the same. And, and for me, uh, yeah, I went to I went to the park and and where I find my best experiences when when I was alone in a park, but reading and like doing really hard, boring reading, unfortunately. <laughs> but but it just it, it helped with that my stream of consciousness just these yeah. other concepts whether they are old or new or something that just way out there you know like one of my first was was reading the red book by carl jung which was <laughs> you know i was i was along for the ride but i wasn't in the passenger seat so I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so but but yeah and i just i just love that and you just you just think so deeply yeah. and yes. and and that is that is also another skill that we find that is being eroded away is to yeah. is to think critically because we trade that thinking critically for all these distractions yes so yes um aaron has heard me say this um a lot i i said she kept asking well what do you think and i said I feel like it has turned it like almost a gyroscope on in my consciousness. Like when I started to microdose, all of a sudden I had these like rotating things that were happening in my, my neurology that sparked my creativity, my interest in getting back into art, you know, being more friendly, talkative, connecting to people. So for me, it's been like this gyroscope of conscious possibility and, and um, I'm not going back to to uh, this, I'm not going back to this. <laughs> to side 300, of the to 300 uh, pathways. <laughs> and in a later episode, we'll talk a little bit about um, a study that is also from the John Hopkins um, Center, where they're using psilocybin in a microdose level to study the effects of how we can treat Alzheimer's. Mm. And I have a friend who had Alzheimer's through his entire family grandma, great grandma, mom, sister. He was scared to death and he's his mm. late fifties. And we started having this discussion. I showed him this image. We began this same discussion. And um, I'll never forget what he said to me. And he's many, many months into microdosing at this point. He said, this is the first time in my adult life that I have hope that I may not have to walk that path like my grandma, my mom, my dad. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, you want to talk about something that can really, you know, give you some hope. 
well, there's this is yeah. this is one of those things yeah. that's there for us to, to yeah. take advantage of. Hope, sovereignty, you have a say in this direction. It's yeah. almost like I remember thinking about it one time going, hey, this is kind of like the Second Amendment, where we talk about the right to bear arms, but it's kind of the right to bear arms for your mind. You know, <laughs> it's that it's it's that powerful. It's like yeah, a tyranny. You absolutely. know, you're going against the tyranny of yep. of some things going on that that your mind can battle. You know, mm -hmm. and I think I think that is that's powerful. Yeah. Um, that reminds me of a comment that Timothy Leary made. I know he was a little bit of a lightning rod, and not our number one guy to follow the path but he said that the remember that the war on drugs isn't a war on drugs it's a war on personal freedom and the reality is especially with these plant-based medicines they are something that we should be able to use to heal our bodies heal our spirits um connect to each other yeah and so yeah microdosing is like the perfect wading pool before you jump into the yes. deep end, yep. it's like the baby pool. You yeah. can walk yeah. in mm -hmm. ankle deep. You can get a sense of the fact that the fear isn't necessary. Um, it helps you break through that veil of fear that has been laid over these medicines yeah. by Western society for the last 70 years. Yeah. And once you're through the waiting pool, then you can become a little more confident to say, you know, maybe um, instead of a microdose, I'm going to eat a little bit more and go out and watch the hummingbirds this morning. Right. Um, and I, and, and it, so, yeah, it's um, the waiting pool is microdosing and that's yeah. a great place to start. And and I think some of the FUD that's out there, you know, because a little bit, a couple of days ago, I was on the DEA website, you know, you know, just looking, you know, checking on psilocybin, see how they're classifying it. And, you know, what is the least lethal dose of, of psilocybin? And it is uh, 280 milligrams per kilograms which is a if i do my math that's a, the lethal dose of psilocybin is 40 pounds yeah that's a lot of <laughs> so if you eat 40 pounds of anything in one sitting that's a lethal dose of whatever is you're putting in your mouth so no, have they actually tried that like how did they get to that number <laughs> i don't know but like my mom said i, I, would even I, I don't even believe it. i don't either i, I would, don't believe I it call yeah. bs on that in a heart nobody's ever died from psilocybin. <laughs> right nope. 40, 40 pounds, if you eat 40 pounds of anything, that's a lethal dose. I we, mean, we eat 40 pounds of Cheetos. And see how <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. Um, so there's some FUD out there that, yeah. um, and I think that's some something that people need to know that there's a lot of FUD that's out there where we talk about, you know, hey, uh, you know, schizophrenia, paranoia, you know. Oh, uh, these these out of body experiences, but some of them are are, are really good. Most people report this ineffable uh, spiritual experience that changed their life for the better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, was it a psychedelic? And absolutely, it was. But it's mm -hmm. an enough. It's it's an, an experience they can't put into words yeah. that has changed their life yeah. for the for the better. You know. So, uh, whereas we're talking about the good things, there's probably 20 amount 20 times the amount of fud out there kind of against yeah. what we're right. what we're talking about and Absolutely. so yeah um i wanted to circle back around with a few questions that our members had um i've already answered them in the um in the community thread but i just wanted to verbalize them um, in case we miss anybody um so brandy was asking you know, what do I need to do specifically to prepare? I think we've spoken to this. Um, when it comes to microdosing, you know, you don't have to take the big preparation like you do for a big journey. And it is also really important to set intentions. I mean, that's just a good practice to live by anyway, to set intentions throughout your day. Yeah. Using it with, a, with the, the sacrament um, is just a, a really beautiful way to honor the medicine. And to help, um, the, the, the mushrooms are teachers. And so if you set an intention with the mushroom, the mushroom is going to give you the answer. The mushroom is going to show you the way. So it's like, it's like giving the mushrooms a compass when you have an intention. Because they, they can go anywhere, and they will, if you don't guide them. Um, another question... Um, what about medication interactions? 
Um, so thankfully, this medicine is so beautiful that it really does not interact with a lot of medicines. So she was specifically asking about antidepressants and how psilocybin interacts with the antidepressants. If you're taking an SSRI antidepressant, the science is showing that the SSRI reduces the strength of the psilocybin, which basically just means you're going to need more mushrooms. Um, and also, just one thing I want to note, um, you know, I too have personal experience taking antidepressants. Um, thankfully, I've been medication free for 14 years um, because of a daily meditation practice. Um, but when I was on that train 14 plus years ago, I was on three different antidepressants at once. Yay, me! And... Um, do not ever, 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 ever stop taking antidepressants abruptly by yourself um, or even wean the dose. Do not mess with the dosing at all. Only, only, only ever do that with the strict um, oversight of a prescribing provider because it's very, very, very rough. Yeah. Uh, coming off of them. I was actually going to ask Donovan if when you started to microdose, if you felt it was easier to take yourself off of the pharmacopoeia that you had been getting from the doctor. Did it help you kind of set that down or? Easy. Yeah, that was that was an, a really easy adjustment. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it, I think it was I think it was it was easy for me uh, because the psilocybin seemed to work much faster. Oh, yeah. Ah, that came directly from the study I talked about in the last episode mm -hmm. where they described the instant impact in less than 24 hours of how it redirected the scaffolding usage of the three main neurological systems in your brain to send the signals back and forth. Yeah. Um, the SSRI mm -hmm. medicine takes sometimes up to a month to begin to try to slowly change those pathways and it doesn't really do a very effective job of it even then psilocybin showed that it did it within 24 hours and it did it on an almost exponentially better faster um result yeah so. yeah and and that in itself is also scary for people that hey this medicine works immediately that is since it's just not typical no you know it's, it's just not, not. that that can also be, in the last study i read that, that said that kind of scares people a little bit yeah. that it works but it works so fast you know and it, um but i found right away that man i it was a, it was an easy transition for me and that first month i don't know if aaron if you can uh, relate but my first month going on those types of prescriptions that first month got worse before it got better. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, uh, and, they, and they tell you that they say, Hey, this is probably going to get worse before the medication takes over, takes effect. And, and you start feeling the effects of it. Yeah. 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 I think it's good though. You mentioned don't just stop taking, you know, those prescriptions. Or even change your dose. Just don't do it. Yeah, get, get just some, do not do it. Some guidance with that, but no, that that's hopefully the goal and the problem with psilocybin and that's why it's been locked in the closet for seven years is it works right away and you don't need to take it every day for the rest of your life wow that's not a very good business model is no, it no it's not uh, <laughs> sorry sorry back my soapbox you're allowed you're allowed soapboxes here we're allowed to have um so joy from the membership was also asking are there different protocols you know if you're using it for you know depression or anxiety or creativity or you know is are, are there different protocols for different things that you're using it for no just just start taking it just start taking it it will impact every area of your life um and so for me personally what microdosing has done for me um, you know, as I mentioned before, I've been medication free. Um, I've been able to keep my depression at bay with my meditation practice. And I know that the microdosing helps. I know it does. Absolutely. Um, 
for me, it was uh, when I first started microdosing, I noticed, um, you know, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. I just want everyone to know that it's it's not. Um, and it's exactly what you need. You get exactly what you need. Um, when I first started microdosing, I started to notice more fluctuations in my emotional, uh, my, my emotional lability. Is that a word? Lability? L lability? Um, and when I started to learn about the medicine, you know, the medicine, the way that it works, when it really starts to go deep within you, the first couple of layers that the medicine opens up for you are fear and shame and guilt. So I just want everyone to be prepared that, you know, if you start microdosing and you're more emotional and you're having memories come up um, that you haven't thought about a lot and, and really strong emotions attached to those memories, the medicine is working. That is working for you to bring those memories up to the surface to be acknowledged and, and released. So just be aware and you know, if you're encountering some strong emotions, that's where your self-compassion comes in. You know, I'm a human, um, I'm perfectly imperfect. There's more suffering than happiness. Um, millions, billions of people experience this ex exact same thing that I'm experiencing. And that self-compassion really, um, instantly rewires your own body chemistry so that you can become aware of the present moment and just be with everything that you're experiencing. And that's really the key to breaking through with a lot of traumas and, and deep stuff is just to be present with it, not to wish it wasn't there or wish it was different or hate that you're feeling that way. You know, don't curse the fruits. You know, you're asking the medicine to 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 work, and 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 you can't you can't curse the fruits when when you get something that's a little bit uncomfortable. So just just trust that you are getting exactly what you need, and it's going to be okay. It really is. It yeah. really is. I think that's really important that you highlighted that because, like, when I started microdosing. I, I wasn't depressed. I, the only day I've ever been depressed, I remember, was when the Broncos got crushed in the Super Bowl by Seattle. And that only lasted a couple days because I was snow skiing. So, But I watched Erin go through the process of journaling and spending the time in the morning to be intentional with her microdosing process for the first many months. And some mornings I would see that she, something had bubbled up and she was going through some things that maybe she hadn't confronted Mm. Things that she wished she had done differently in her life or things, people that she had relationships that didn't work out. And the microdosing bubbled those things up. I saw her acknowledge them, work on them, think about them, and then cut tethers and let, them, let it go. Alchemize. And so her process and what the medicine has done for, for Aaron has been completely different. Um and so I think that's really critical yeah. that you kind of highlight that. Yeah, but but also, you know, I mentioned how it's helped our marriage tremendously. Yep. Um, about six months after I started microdosing, you know, I've always been a very visual child or a visual person. I remember as a teenager being able to visualize my outfits for the day that I was wearing. And um, so when I first started microdosing, about six months in, I started having these very profound visions in my morning meditation and it was about my retreats <laughs> so the mushrooms basically led me to this business model and uh you know i just follow the direction of what the mushrooms tell me and it's working out pretty good so far <laughs> so um you know this this medicine is so incredible it will touch every aspect of your life um, sometimes I can just sit here for an hour and hang out with my hummingbirds in the morning and it is like going to church, but better. It's, it's my church, you know, it's, it's the most amazing thing ever. I think everyone should be on mushrooms. It changed um, a little fast. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I think we're about 45 minutes in. I just want one more, um, to address one more topic, unless you guys have other things that you want to talk about the the million dollar question is where do i get the mushrooms where do i get the medicine where do i get it where do i get it 
And that's the million dollar question. We get asked that question all the time. Um, so if you're a woman, you can uh, hop on a call with me, come to our women's retreats. We're gonna be having another one in this fall. Um, but we, we really like to empower our members and everybody to grow your own medicine because there is so much medicine in growing your own medicine for healing. Um, so we have a couple of different options for you. Um, you know, there's lots of different options out there. I was just uh, looking at Paul Stamets' um, contraption that he has. But, you know, we have uh, Jacob. Jacob is our super smart mycology expert in our community. And he has created a contraption that will allow for you to grow your own medicine at home and you're cutting many of the steps, you know, growing mushrooms is a long, drawn out, very tedious, time consuming process, but very fun and very beautiful. And um, he has been able to create a system, and there's a few of them out there actually, yep. that um, will allow for you to buy your spores, which is legal to do. You can buy spores. Unless you live in California and one other state. Oh. I think so. Okay. So check on that. Yeah, but. check on check on that. But it's it's legal to buy spores, and then um, Jacob can teach you you know how to grow your own medicine at home. And he is at www.fungifanatics.org, and I'll be sure to include um, that link in our. He calls um, it the boombox. Yeah, it's called the boombox. <laughs> And, um, but yeah, there's lots yeah. of those on the, you can find these, yeah. these technologies. Um, yeah. Aaron made it sound very difficult, long drawn out. It can be, it, it is definitely not a really easy process, but it's also not that hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've met some folks that order spore syringes off the internet, literally stick them in a jar and set them in their bathroom on the counter next to their shower. And then, you know, somehow yeah. it works. The mushrooms have been... The, the mycelium has been making mushrooms for millions of years before we got involved. Yeah. <laughs> so remember, it's not it's not as hard as it might seem. Right. Um, yeah. But we should also highlight the fact that we do not distribute or sell mushrooms. Um, no. So if that, you come to the women's retreats, yes, that's a different story. <laughs> yes, that's different. Um, so legally, we do not sell and distribute, yeah. but the the Church of the Divine Heart is yeah. a protected religious institution yes and so that's a different different situation yeah yeah so um well what do you guys think are there is there anything else that I, we need to cover we've been hammering think, away at it for... i think as we get questions and, and kind of feedback from the group members um there's a, there's a thousand different avenues that the microdosing discussion could go down yes. there's current ongoing clinical trials that are available to the masses. Uh, there's a place called Microdose Me where you can start your own microdosing regimen and sign up to send in your feelings, your information, your observations, and they're collecting data. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, the waiting baby pool that our society is slowly walking into to see, oh, the water's kind of warm. Let's go a little <laughs> deeper. Yeah. And so, um, you know, my thing is, I think there'll be future episodes where we can talk about lots more. Yeah. But this is a good kickoff into the topic of microdosing. Yeah. And I appreciate you guys talking about, you know, growing your medicine at home. I think that is also yeah. very empowering, yes. you know, uh, and it also gives you a sense of uh, personal sovereignty when you're able to do that. Yep. Uh, and it's, and that's really a really wonderful thing. And my fear was always, you know, as I, as I looked at books and videos was always contamination, contamination, yeah. contamination. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. I'm afraid. Um, so, um, the, the, uh, the fungi fanatics, uh, the boom box was, it took a lot of the scary work out of it. So I really appreciated that. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, and the neat thing is, um, as as policies change, uh, decriminalization begins. Mm -hmm. There's going to be potentially the ability for, and this is down the road, but for um, facilities to ship the mycelium in a already established block to a client, and then it fruits the bodies, the mushrooms, when you receive it. So they're not actually shipping mushrooms; they're shipping mycelium. So there's a lot of amazing things that'll happen in the next couple of years. Um, 
But again, once mycelium gets running and gets a certain amount of strength, it's able to overcome contamination. Um, and so mycelium is a lot stronger and tougher than, than we may give it credit for in the textbooks. Remember, it's been making mushrooms for millions of years, long before the monkeys got involved. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> which is good. Well, Wood, All right. Donovan, yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks buddy. Donovan. Um, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all of your awesome brain cells that you always contribute to our sessions. And well, thank um, you. Lovely always being here with you guys. I miss you guys. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I miss you too, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, thank you again, and look forward to the next time. All right. right on, brother. Take care, man. Take care. We'll talk Take soon. Care. Bye. Bye.